Hey YouTube, it's Mal with Olympus Reptiles. This is going to be another video where you're going to see a lot of snakes. Uh, so what are we going to do today? Well, here's what we're going to do today. First, because last I know the audio sucks, I turned my mic off somehow. I'm checking, it is actually working. Sorry about that. We filmed them in the same day, so that's how I know I screwed that up. Anyway, back to reality. We're going to, we're in the new house now, right? And thank you Patreon members for this wonderful place to work. I want to give a shout out to all of you right now. Uh, there's too many people to list at the moment, but we're going to figure out a way to list everybody to say thank you for this because it's amazing to get to work here. And with that, I want to share with everybody on YouTube a rack tour. We have too many animals in here to do a reptile room tour and do it justice in 30 seconds. Plus, when I see people doing a reptile room tour and they show every animal they have, if they have as many as we have and they do that video in under about three and a half hours, then they really don't know their animals and not give them the attention that I think that they each deserve because they're each special in their own way. I want to tell you a little bit about each and every one I show. So we're going to break our reptile cabin room, ball python room, our reptile house ball python room, that's a good name for it, uh, into separate rack tours. And today I'm going to be touring this rack over here, which is mostly my males. And then of course we'll do other videos throughout to kind of show you everything that's in here right now. But let's go ahead and start right up here. And this is my boy Merlin. Now Merlin, that part of his body is water dish, is a mystic, right? So what does that mean? Kind of like it's, it's a lelic with bell complex. So mystic Mojave is what makes your mystic potions. Uh, mystic lesser, any of that stuff is going to be a lelic. There's a super mystic. But it's going to be very, very similar to like Mojave and lesser. Definitely not the same colors as a lesser, right? Uh, easy to tell the difference there. Much, much, much darker. Doesn't have the fading. But you can see the individual keyholes. I think they're darker overall than the other two, even than Mojave. So that's kind of what you look for. But that is our proven mystic. He is a proven breeder for us. Helps if I put his head actually in the tub, but not on top of the rack. Whoops. Then we'll go across the hallway to this guy. He's already got his head sticking up for me. Come here, buddy. And this is one of my... <laughs> Original Exanthic breeder males. This is Hades. He is an Exanthic spider. So you're really seeing the silver color come out, the white, no yellow in this snake. Uh, very, very awesome animal. He is a proven breeder for us. This is Zeus's dad. Look at that. He's already ready to start. He's starting to push a little bit. See that? Where I can run my finger and he pushes back. That means we're just starting to think about girls, but I think there's probably more before we're going to start doing that. You can see he's a pretty good sized male. This year, he hasn't been doing the best feeding for us. And some of the times, you got to figure out what your individual snake wants. Hades decided he didn't want to eat rats for a while. So he's been eating mice. Give him mice, he eats. Give him rats, he doesn't. So what do we do? We give him mice. Then we'll try to get him back on rats. If he refuses, we'll go back to mice. And we'll kind of roll that through until eventually we get him where we want. Now, this is one of Kurt's original snakes before we just joined everything. This would be Loki, his lesser. Kurt keeps saying we should breed this lesser. We have never bred him. Uh, I'm sure he would do just fine, and we may do that someday just so he gets a chance to, you know, not be a 40-year-old virgin, because who wants that? Not, uh, well, I mean, I'm not 40, and <laughs> that ship sailed. Um, I'm not going to tell you how many years ago, because I'd have to do the math. But it uh, wasn't 30, because that would have made me 8. How about that? So we're between 20 and 30 years ago. That would be a safe bet. <laughs> and then we'll pull out this guy here. This is our GHI male. We did name him. Do you remember what we named him, Kurt, or would I have to look it up? I might have to look it up. So he is one of our proven breeders too. I love GHI, I love what it does. Of course, we've kept some more GHI to work towards some super GHI and things like that. Just an awesome snake, single gene male. You look like you wanna eat my face today. Why are we being that way? Come on. Ugh. This is Nyx. Now, Nyx, if you study your gods as a female name, this is actually a male. This was one we bought, and we bought it as a female. It ended up being male. We did contact the company we bought it from. No, I'm not going to list their name. I'm not trying to give them a bad reputation on that. Miss Sex has happened. As a matter of fact, I've done it. I missed Sex a snake, and I know, and the guys contacted me. We're like, hey, man, we'll make it right. So we're, we're going to do that. We'll probably just give him credit or something towards something different, let him keep that. It happens. And they offered to make this right. We never ended up cashing in on that because, honestly, it was just the fact that they were willing to that meant a, a lot to me. So we ended up using him after all. And he has fathered our super pastel exanthic along with a uh, 
few of our double het or hets that we're going to use to make. Since he's unrelated and he is not Zeus's father, that also helped to diversify my females I held back, allowing me to, uh, you know, be able to come back there and not be as related when I breed, which is nice. This is one of my bigger males. He's going to get an, actually a bigger tub just because he's so massive. He's going to get an adult female tub. Uh, this is Apollo. Apollo is a bumblebee. Uh, him with, along with Erebus, who you won't see today, he'll be on a different rack tour, were the first two ball pythons I ever bought. Let me tell you a little story about this guy. So when I bought him, I didn't want him. Uh, the only reason I bought him is I got a really good deal buying a package at once. This is my one experience in trying to be a reptile flipper, I guess. I didn't even know it was a bad thing. I really only wanted the Exanthic. But I had contacted a shop here in town. They're like, hey, we'd love to have that bumblebee. And they offered to buy him from me. And the price I was going to get to sell him just to the shop basically was making my Exanthic free. Pretty awesome, right? So I bought him, bought both, drove all the way back home from Kansas City. And then I found out that the shop was closed. This is the same shop that I now own part of, for the record. Different ownership at the time. Neither one of the two owners that were there then are there now. And... The shop was closed because where were they at? Kansas City had a show. However, I wasn't prepared for two snakes. I didn't have two cages. I did not want to put them in a cage together. So I ended up going straight to Petco right, and buying an old, another setup uh, so I could get a heat pad and all that kind of stuff I needed. So then if I was like, man, if I'm going to set him up, I'm just going to keep him because I'd already kind of really regretted agreeing to sell him on the way home because he was just so cool. So we kept Apollo all these years since then really awesome snake but he does need to go to an adult female tub you know and we always say adult male tub and adult female tub it's mostly based on size he's big enough he needs one of those i just need to move him and i haven't had a chance to yet but we will be because you got to go by the size of the snake not just the sex now we talked about that mystic this is a mystic potion so when you pair a mystic and a mojave together and you get the allelic combo this is what you're going to get right here Really, really cool animals. Let me put this one back. All right, we're going to have to make a slight in-camera change or in-video change. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pull my mic off right here. And you're probably thinking, Matt, why are you pulling the mic off? Because this next thing is one that Kurt really wanted. So I'm going to let him pull it out and show it to you. So Kurt's going to give me the camera. He's like so excited about this. This is probably the only time you're going to see an in-video camera change ever. Da, 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 da. And now, Kurt, I won't show your belly while you're getting dressed. Oh, no. Although yours is smaller than mine. That's not a short joke. That's actually me saying that I'm fatter than Kurt. I eat more. And so, Kurt, what animal will you be sharing with us today? Um, a snake. A snake? Would you like this? Yes. So this is a blood python. It's a matrix uh, blood python. And I think the only reason Matt's having me do this is because he doesn't want to get bit. Wait a minute. Matt's going to tell you that's not exactly true. One, he doesn't want to get bit. But two is, Kurt was all, oh, I want blood pythons. And if we get blood pythons, yep, I'll take care of them and all that. Yep, here they are in the reptile house where I have to do everything. So I figured for at least showing him on video, we'd let Kurt... Handle the blood python. At some point, you're going to have to put hands on that beast. I know. Would you like me just to come over there and film it? Well, let's see how this goes. So you haven't been handling her every day? No, that was your job, remember? You're like, yeah, I want the blood python, they'll be fine. I should watch what I'm doing with the camera, not what he's doing. Yeah, well, let me get a good view in action on this. We'll get Kurt action shot. You don't have to pick her up, we can just show her here. But she will need to be adjusted to what's going on. So we'll talk about her. Yeah, so this is um, a blood python, this is a matrix. Um, so, the thing about them is they are um, aggressive as they're younger, but they do tend to tame down the older they get or if you handle them more. Um, the thing about them is when they get older, you know, they can get six feet or so and be, you know, 40 pounds. So they are kind of a handle. Um, 
but the thing about him is that I um, didn't know that much is that they like to kind of burrow. She likes to kind of get down in here um, a lot, so they kind of stay hidden some. Now you can see I'm getting a super up close shot. I'm risking life and limb to bring you the super up close shot. No camera tricks here. I'm not using the zoom feature at all. I'm completely lying. Actually, we should probably leave her down there. I want to show you something on her body that I can point out to you. So look how thick she is here. Look how thick she is in the back end. What that tells me is one thing about blood. So I'm actually hitting the zoom button with the camera cord there. Is they, uh, they eat pretty good sized meals. They also save up their poop. And that's what she's doing. So here in a little while, probably soon, because she looks like she's about to go, she's going to drop a Labrador-sized duke in there. All right, we'll close her back up. We can trade back now if you like. Yep. <laughs> that was fun. This is also my way of getting you guys a chance to see camera guy Kurt a little bit more. He is getting over his camera shyness one video at a time. Is it working? Somewhat. Somewhat. Still not your favorite thing? No. But you do a, a much better job at it. Well, I'm sure your camera works much better than mine. That was probably a complete and total shit show. All right, guys, so I am back. We avoided anybody getting bit by a blood python. It'll be really interesting. What I should do, and I might do that after we close this camera off, is get a before picture of her now and an after picture after she passes that duke. Because let me tell you, it's going to be a significant duke. Sorry if that camera weighs a little bit bad. All right, back to work. So the next one up will be Thalia. Hi, girly. She's a very noisy snake. She is one of our het clowns. Now, she is a possible het caramel. So with this year's experience and finding out that our clown male is actually het caramel, which we had no idea and no way of knowing, you done? You done being hissy? I had to, like, hand feed you. Remember, girly? And you're going to be this way to me. She's always like this. But with that, we will not be able to breed him to her because of the possibility of her being het, and I'm just not going to take the risk. So... We'll have to get a new clown male to bring back to her for breed purposes because, again, I'm not going to make caramels. There you go. Oh, I know. Queen pissy pants. And this guy here is Era. And Era, well, he looks like a normal is not. He is our het for snow. That means that he's 100% albino and exantic. As a matter of fact, this is dad to the albino I showed you that was a paradoxing. So really kind of a cool snake. Just, you know, part of our snow project. So we'll throw him back in there. Uh, this is one of our most famous snakes when it comes to a video. And you'll see why after I set her up here. Let me clean all the coconut off of here and stuff. Now, if you guys remember, for those of you that have watched us for a very long time, we did that video about handling aggressive snakes and covering the head. This was the one that sat on the table and wagged her tail at me. And a lot of people are like, oh, if you handle her all the time, she'll be super nice. They get better with time, as you can see. She still takes her shots at me. You can still see how stiff she is. And if I mess with her too much, she's going to have a go. She still isn't super friendly or super nice. But she is better, and that's about the best we can hope for. So what we call her is the ghost bitch, because that is kind of how she acts, is terrible. Uh... Anyway, this is what she is. And you had like a fly larva on you of all things, which means let her stay right there. And that tells me that, yeah, you were sitting on a, your own duke. So what I'm going to do now is just do a little cleaning in here. Because that's kind of gross. And that's the thing too, you know, we don't, some people I know will go through everything and like try to make everything 100% perfect before they film. We don't do that. Kurt, the uh, hand sanny. Well, we throw it away. We just had it a minute ago. It's right behind you. Let me see that. Yeah, he's getting rid of my hand, Sammy. So we don't do that. We just kind of open stuff and go. You can see she's very, very healthy. She's not been eating, but she's kind of at that wall. So I'm hoping she'll start pounding food here very, very soon. And we'll be able to breed her this year, giving us another visual ghost for pairing purposes. Get back in there. This one is an empty one. This is a female Blitz. 
So this is one of my own production that we held back. And she's also been kind of on a hiatus from food, but she's growing really well. So I'm hoping again, she'll start eating for us. We can have her breeding soon. Excellent example right there of what the Blitz gene looks like and that it kind of wants to hook right there in and of itself. See that? That is about as good as it gets if you're looking for a Blitz marker. You can also see it here, but I don't think it's as cool or strong. I don't know if she's trying to move around on me. So you can kind of just see it all through the hook and hook and hook and hook and that's what you're really looking for. It will turn into some singles sometimes, but it typically has that hook going on. You also get these little like, I don't know, what are those little stupid things, those Teletubbies with the antennas that are on TV for a while? That's why I don't have kids, I have to watch that shit. But that kind of looks like a little Teletubby on her, it's kind of funny. I don't know, somebody say they look like devil horns where the hooks are. Get in there. Come on. No, get in there. There she goes. All right, this is one of Kurt's favorites right here. It's one of her holdbacks on this rack. This is a Orange Dream Pastel, and you can just see how bright and gorgeous that animal is. It's a really beautiful snake. So we have some great pairings to do with this. I know Kurt really wants to make Super Orange Dreams, which would be neat. He's going to fight me. I'm going to want to stick Blitz to it because I really want to see some Blitz Orange Dream. But uh, we're going to end up doing one of, the, one of the two, I guarantee it. Get back in there, girly. And then we got this one here, which is our Suma male. I'll just set them up here. He is just an awesome, awesome snake. Very, very dark, very, very kind of cinnamon colored. Uh, pretty much paddles except for the solid stripe down their back. And he is going to be a key to really making true black. One thing I don't know if the camera's going to pick up very well. Maybe if I can move it around in the light. They do have a pretty good iridescence on them. I can really see it coming in right there, kind of that rainbow sheen. The head will show it a lot too. I don't know if I can get him to crawl and show his head. But it's not like Brazilian rainbow, you know? But I would say it's pretty close to like a Colombian. Over here is a snake that's still labeled as a super pastel spot nose, but got proven out to be just a pastel spot nose. And this is who we call Titus. We did use him one year. Uh, I don't know if we will... Spot nose isn't my favorite thing, so we'll see what you do with him. I'm sure we will add it to some stuff. You do have to be careful with spot nose. We did put it to spider. We were able to successfully do that, but we found out later on, and again, no matter how much research you do, you're going to miss some things, guys. I'm not uh, infallible either, that it doesn't always combo well with spider. It can cause some more issues, so we have avoided that. I would avoid it with champagne or anything that kind of is known to do that as well. I also uh, know people who absolutely love the Powerball, which is a super spot nose. I avoid that too. See any in that one? No, that's my spare ones. But over here is the last one in this rack. And that is the GHI Mojave female we made. I love this snake. Man, you know, when Bumblebee first came out, that was a two-gene combo that took the ball python world by storm. That was before my time. But it just blew everybody away. And you don't see very many true two-gene combos coming out that just are so breathtakingly different that really just go... Oh, this was one. GHI Mojave is definitely more than the sum of its parts. Uh, Bell Complex Snakes kind of did that with the all white solid snake. You know, and if we ever hit a two gene solid black that's stable, it would kind of do the same thing. But I just think, just, I love these. Uh, I want to brighten this up even further while trying to darken that. I think mahogany could benefit this, you know. I think there's a lot of things that could benefit this. Speaking of that, mahogany, hint, hint, hint. Hello, Suma, right? All right, guys, that is that rack, or actually that is that two rack, and that rack is some of our FB40s, which mainly contain males, and then you'll saw a bunch of females too. Those are females still growing up that we're having more success with in that size before we move them to their adult tubs. Kurt, anything you want to add? No. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We're going to slide over to Patreon and try to show this some other cool stuff. See you next time.